This meeting is being held remotely as an alternative means of public access pursuant to Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023 and all other applicable laws, temporarily amending certain provisions of the open meeting law. You are hereby advised that this meeting and all communications during this meeting may be recorded by the Town of Hingham in accordance with the open meeting law. <clears throat> if any participant wishes to record this meeting, please notify the chair at the start of the meeting in accordance with Mass General Law, uh, Chapter 30A, Section 20F, so that the chair may inform uh, all other participants of said recording. I don't think anyone else is recording this. Um, just sort of a side note, I've been, I've been advised that we should not in any official communications with the town refer to ourselves as the CAC. Um, the full, full name needs to be used uh, when we uh, publish stuff. So it's the Cable TV Advisory Committee. So uh, CAC is kind of frowned on because not everybody is up on what the, the letters stand for. So that'd be um, just a word for the wise. Um, the agenda is um, call to order. I now call this meeting to order. Uh, we have uh, John Rice. We have we have John Lawler, and uh, we got what? Who else do we have? Oh, okay. Um, uh, <laughs> school committee. <laughs> uh, um, what's that? Heather. Heather. She's there you go, house. John. I was having a brain cramp here, but Heather. Okay. Um, did, I, I didn't see any meeting minutes because I was been out running around doing eye surgery and all the rest of it. So uh, are there any meet, meeting minutes uh, running around that people should approve? Going once, going twice. There are indeed. So we have uh, the minutes of uh, June 14th were okay. distributed for approval. Okay. Um, is there any discussion on the minutes? Going once? No. Nope. Nope. Uh, do, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? I motion to approve the minutes. I second it. Uh, John Rice? I. I. Dave Jones approves. John Lala? I approve. All right. Heather? I approve. All right. Meeting minutes are hereby approved, and our most excellent uh, secretary, who we're trying to move off that job, <laughs> we'll get them posted. All righty. Next on the agenda is uh, the finances review. Um, I don't know if, John, if you were able to talk with Mike or go through it or not. Is there any discussion on the uh, finances for uh, Harbor Media on the uh, this, this past go-around, past year? Right. So um, I'm a little late in the game here. Okay. Uh, Michael Leary really left some uh, some big shoes to fill. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fair. <laughs> and uh, he has a great understanding of a lot of this stuff. Um, I had a helpful Zoom meeting with him the other day, but I just got, um, Michelle was good enough to share with me the, the folder I needed to get to, which I was flailing to find. Um, so this afternoon, I was able to um, punch he, Mike's spreadsheet, um, had some wonderful formulas into it. And oh uh, <laughs> there's there's the wonder of copy and paste, right? So, yeah, um, yeah. so I was able to uh, generate some numbers that make some sense. Uh, for the 2022 year, but uh, I also uh, would not uh, it would not mind at all if Michelle says, "Oh no, that's completely wrong." <laughs> <laughs> um, do, do you want um, to take so, take some more time with it? I mean, is, I, well, I guess from my point of view, is there anything like, "Geez, we have to fix this," or "Everything's great," or you know? Um, I you know that. There are the financial situation with Harbor Media and the mul multiple parties contributing in the town, blah, blah, blah. It, it's, I, I honestly, I think I'm really being real when I say I just don't understand it. Okay. <laughs> so I, I don't know that I can provide um, any sort of meaningful commentary on it. 
if you want to, I can, we could look at the uh, completed spreadsheet and see where things went, went up or down. And um, Michelle might have some insights if you want to spend time on that, but it, that's up to you guys. Yeah, I, uh, Michelle, is there anything in particular that you'd like to focus on? Because, you know, it's a lot of stuff there. Is there anything that... Yeah. I would say I could identify a trend since we, you know, have completed uh, fiscal year 22-23 as of June 30th. Mm -hmm. um, we were down uh, about $4,000 in cable revenue. The, yep. the sharpest drop was in Verizon. Um, wow. and, and Comcast only picked up about 40% of the Verizon that was lost. Mm -hmm. Um, so when we, um, presented our budgets last year, it was based on, I believe 530 or yeah, yeah it was based on 530,000 receiving from the town. We received 95% of the gross <clears throat> receipts from the town and yep. we were down $4,000. Okay. So we, okay. we were operating on a budget and we get four quarterly payments from the town. And, you know, I watch the expenses and watch the uh, income from the town. But at the end of the day, uh, we were down 4,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And and that is that is the trend. That's not a big surprise. Yep. Uh, people are cutting cable. There's pending legislation. There was a hearing this week in the state legislature for the streaming bill to, as Representative Moschino says, treat the streaming companies the same way the cable companies are treated. So we'll see if that's additional revenue in the next one to two years. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, right now we receive less income for the second year in a row. But you did say that Comcast was an increase, not a decrease? Comcast and Comcast, um, <clears throat> I wouldn't call it an increase. I'm just saying that it picked up the loss of the Verizon, but overall the net was down 4,000 as a total of cable income yeah. for us. Right, yeah. but the Comcast was basically not the one who was losing more of the exactly. <laughs> more of the, the revenue. And do, do um, I, I wish we could get a breakdown of like where that money's coming from, you know? Like, is it because there's more pay-per-view or there's, is it because, you know, I mean, there's gotta be some churn in terms of people cord cutting, but where does, you know, I, I just stands to reason that Comcast is losing subs, but they're gaining revenue from other streams. You know, and I'd be curious to know what the that is so that we can detailed quarterly reports. And Michael Leary um, had really had a breakthrough on reconciling some of that and the accounts. Remember, right before Michael Leary left, he asked me if yeah. I had spent forty five thousand dollars on capital, and I said no. And then he no. asked it was uh, the town that had used the cable funds for capital to um, really, really do an overhaul of some wiring in town-owned buildings. So Michael got really granular on that, but they do have quarterly statements from Comcast and Verizon that, I mean, that the, show. That would break down what you know what the percentage of comes from pay per view or comes from pay services or comes from basic cable. It's not percentage, yeah, it's not percentage, John. The once or twice that I've seen them, it, they're dollars, so they don't give you a lot of analysis. It's just I'm, a strict report of here's how much we're paying you, we're Comcast. Here's how much we're paying you, and this is the breakdown of where it comes from. Dave, do we get any any reporting from any of these cable people, you think, about their price increases as well? Because I know that, you know, the, the Xfinities of the world and the Verizons of the world that, you know, all of a sudden you get a 10 percent increase because they're they're claiming there's inflation. There's this, there's that. Um, I mean, they at do. one point or another, are, are, do we do we have any anything, any clause in our agreement that tells them that they they need to alert us you know, or the town about sort of extraordinary increases that go beyond a standard, you know, uh, uh, you know, living thing or whatever. I know we don't, we don't get any, um, as far as I know, we don't have anything that says there's a limit on what they can charge, but we do get at least uh, a lot from uh, Comcast. Uh, whenever they change anything, if they drop a channel, if they add a channel, uh, uh, if they raise something, there's a document in, uh, that they send us. And I get a copy, and it's actually in our um, in our uh, file server. Um, but it's just it just says, "Hey, we're going to charge you X amount of money for this," and you know, and that 
I believe that is in at least at least Comcast takes that pretty religiously. They um, they every time they make any kind of change, they send a letter to the town and they CC the um, the cable TV advisory committee, which is us. So, but I don't know if we got anything that says you can't raise. You know, or, no, I don't think we got anything like that. Or we yeah, can no, it's, it's it's interesting. You know how they're moving the streaming services. It's like, for instance. Comcast owns Peacock. Right. Peacock was a throw-in and a freebie for the first six months or a year. Right. It right. now no longer is. It's asking people to pay extra for Peacock. Why they would, I don't have no idea because it's, <laughs> it's the lamest of them all. But um, the, you know, the question is, is that all of a sudden they're shifting it to streaming. Why? Why isn't that, as it was part of cable revenue at one point, you know, now it's not, or a benefit to our subscribers. You know, there's there's just a lot of jockeying with the money, you know? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is tangentially on the Peacock thing, um, Xfinity is always wheeling and dealing. And Xfinity has a, um, I'm not really sure if they sent the town a formal um, write-up on it, but they do have a thing called Xfinity Rewards. And if you sign up for that, it's essentially a, um, a survey thing where they have customers fill out periodic surveys and um, they get quote unquote the Xfinity rewards. Um, one of the rewards is you get free Peacock uh, Plus. I, I know it's a big right. deal, yeah. but um, there is, for people who are wondering what she's talking, I get it for free again. I did it, I signed all, I don't do much of anything. And uh, you know, they, they, take, uh, they take the cost of um, Peacock Plus off your bill. And you get it as long as you're an Xfinity customer and you continue to fill out their surveys, um, you get Peacock Plus for free. So hmm. I can tell and, get, and, and, and get your and get your private information. Well, time. there is that, <laughs> but a long time ago I gave up all my privacy rights. I got woof, you know. I'm I am the worst guy on keeping track of that. So uh, that's why my spam filter is on very high. But anyway. Um, that's one way to do it. Would you folks like to look at the total? Yeah, could you, uh, can you just share the quick, the, the, uh, the, um, you know, the highlights if you got it? Yeah. 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 Thanks. Let can me you, see um, if I can figure out how to do that. All right. Let me see here. Multiple, you should be able to do it. Down the bottom, well, on yeah. my screen, down the bottom, share screen, pop that up. Yep. And you can just share your whole screen or just the, the app. It's it's up to what you want to do. There you go. Wow, great. So um, I'm kind of just zooming in on the last columns here for you can see a bit of 2020 versus 2020 for one and then on to 2022. Can you can you folks see that? OK, yep, yep, it's great. So one thing that I see that the cash Cash is down considerably. Yep. Which may be a good thing. Um, this funds for Norwell here has changed. That's that's really taking some big ups and downs. Is that part of? Um, I don't know what that is. Maybe somebody it knows. Um, Michelle, do you have any idea what the difference is? Okay. Oh, you. You're on mute. You're mute. You're mute. Take yeah, two. sorry about that. I'm adjusting my view because I really can't um, see. Maybe I need some reading glasses. Um, all I can say is that Norwell's funds are completely separate, so they're of no uh, mixing, they they have a completely separate bank account, so they are of no consequence to Hingham Operations. I guess would be the best way to identify that. Yeah, I, I guess you know, yeah, your point is really well taken. It's it's not so much you know what their finances are, it's so much how much money do we get from them in revenue. You know, if that goes down for some reason or other, you know, or up. Well, or... Hingham Hingham doesn't get anything in terms of revenue, but in terms of expenses, Norwell helps share the burden. Yeah, of okay, expenses. yeah, yeah. And on the on the uh, budget to actual, it shows the cost savings. Um, more, I, 
what was it this past fiscal year, $30,000. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I've said it before with the cost increase just on our lease alone, which was 40%, 41%, that yeah. Hingham operating would not have been able to bear the burden of that without laying off staff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Michelle, uh, has Norwell also had a, uh, a a downturn in terms of your your revenue? Yeah. yeah, they don't they don't fund us that way. I'm I'm glad you asked. Um, and I know Greg McBride, who's on the cable committee for Norwell, former select board member. He's now on our Harbor Media Board with the change of our bylaws. You know, he'd be happy to attend one of these meetings and kind of com compare notes. Um, mm. But they level fund us at $240,000 a year. Um, so that regardless if they're up or if they're down, um, that's what they fund us at. So we have a locked in budget with them. Whereas how much money do they get? How much money do they get from the uh, cable contract? I, I don't, I don't receive their statements. Yeah. We have a locked in agreement to fund at that level. Well, and that would be, that would be in their town report. You know, in other words, it's a published report. Yeah, no, I I, yeah. I don't pursue it, I guess, is what I say. We originally started out with a budget of $200,000, and we did that for the two first fiscal years. And then we assessed the need and, and the response from the public, and I really needed to bring on a second videographer. So I asked for an increase. I made a proposal and said, I'd like you to fund us at 240 regardless of what you bring in. And that was approved by their cable committee. Okay. I'd, I'd be curious, Dave, to find out, like, is, you know, if, what what kind of money they're getting? In other words, if Hingham is giving ninety percent to Harbor Media and and, and I, I don't know, Norwell is giving fifty percent of their cable funds to to Harbor Media. That's kind of interesting. Well, that's not true. Yeah. So well, I don't know. I'm just I'm just speculating. Yeah. Just... No, I've looked. Yeah, I've looked. I've looked it up. Some years they've been down, John, and some years they've been higher than that. But we locked in at two forty. The other thing for Norwell that Hingham is not facing, Norwell's is moving their town hall. So they have a considerable amount in their cable account with the town that they are expecting to use for a completely new setup in a completely new building. So it's going to be a lot of capital um, outlay to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, move it's over. To, go ahead and move over to uh, income and expenses. One thing I want to point out, and this was, you know, where Michael Leary and I, because he was taking such a deep dive um, to understand how we're funded and and how you know we plan our expenses. When you look at our annual audits with DePisa and you look at the schedule of when we receive quarterly checks, we receive our fourth quarterly check at the end of June, right before the end of the fiscal year, <laughs> which really funds our first quarter of our fiscal, our first fiscal year, July, August, and September before we receive another check. So right. there's always more cash, but it's not really cash sitting there that pays for our first quarter of the fiscal year. And, and Michael Leary and I really had to dive into understanding that when it came to funding the grant program, because we don't have that much cash sitting. That actually is our first quarter of fiscal year. I could always wait to cash the tech check until July 1st, um, but then it's going to look like one year got three checks instead of four, if you know what I mean. Right. Yeah. That's just the timing that the checks come from the town and they're just doing that because that's the timing that they have to pay us. I think it's within 30 days or 60 days after getting it from Comcast and Verizon. Mm -hmm. So it always looks cash heavy and we're not sitting on that cash. That's our first quarter for the next year. Yeah. It, it might be worth, I don't know, geez, I don't know where you would put it, but that's as you know, for the lay person looking at the numbers, some kind of asterisk, you know, saying, yeah. you, know, by, you know what I mean? Yeah. No one would know that just by looking at the, I did ask. Um, I did ask our auditor to put that in a footnote uh, yeah, for this yeah. past fiscal year for the because the grant program is funded specifically from reserve and that cash that comes in, you know, June twenty two and then June twenty three. That's not reserve. That's our yeah, first yeah. quarter of the new fiscal year. Yeah, yeah. Some kind of footnote or asterisk, you know, by the by on the income because, you know, the late just the casual you can say, well, hey, you know. Just like it was saying, so yeah, if we could put some kind of verbiage or or note on on uh, 
to alert people. The casual looker at the spreadsheet, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. So one area that Michael was seemed to be very tuned into was payroll as a function of total expense. The percentage that we agreed upon, yes. So I think 65% yeah. was it. So he had two formulas for calculating this, and he tried to explain them to me, and my brain melted onto the floor. <laughs> um, so there are two different numbers. Um, this number is uh, the total payroll divided by the access fee income and this is total payroll divided by total functional expenses so I'm just pointing that out. I, I honestly don't know what that means. <laughs> but, but you know there's two different ones. That's I just know that there were two different formulas, and I asked him why there were two things in the header column, payroll as a percentage of total expense, and he went down a rabbit hole that I could not. Okay, well, he's, with you know, him on. But, but if I'm reading it right, it's close to 65. I, I mean, that's... Yeah, so I, I budgeted the, the new agreement signed in May of 2022 as a five-year agreement, and it dictated, the town dictated that Harbor Media spend 65% or less of yeah. incoming cable revenue. So now that you guys understand we're down a couple of thousand dollars each year, I have to be really conservative in my projection. And then beyond that, to account for any kind of unforeseen but needed overtime, that kind of thing, and still comply with Massachusetts employment laws, um, I usually estimate it at 63%. Mm -hmm. So for yep. an example, this past fiscal year that just that just closed, um, we estimated at uh, 331, um, which was 62.6% .6 of what we ultimately received for the cable grant. It actually was um, I had to, like I said, play that conservatively because we actually collected less. It's it's kind of a, a puzzle because you don't know how down you're going to be on your revenue until the fourth quarter check, to be honest. Mm. So we ended up at 329, which was well within and under that 65%. It was 62%. That's what we ended up for June, the fiscal year ending June 30th, 23. Okay. Yeah. So Good. I think my conclusion is we really need another Michael Leary on this committee. <laughs> That's the insight I got from this. Hey, I guess we, we all we all have to be responsible trying to recruit people, you know. And that's that's been the hard part, you know. No, that John, you know I'm not just saying, hey, just do it. I mean, you know, I it's just we gotta start someplace. So, you know. Right. Right. You know, but we'll uh we will uh, we will certainly um um you know, we all we John's right. We all own it, and uh, the the one who's I think the most up on it is Michelle. And uh, I I guess I'm asking at a, at a sort of a high level is if there's anything that oh my God that we got to work on or I mean I know things are down. I mean, but I have there... some serious I have some serious concerns. Okay. Um, okay. that I've expressed to the board. I've asked yep. them to I've asked them to form a subcommittee on a couple of topics. Mm -hmm. for our uh, future forecasting in two areas. Number one on expenses, uh, yeah. rent is is a very large uh, concern. And, um, you know, with a decrease in revenue, uh, we're looking at obviously non-cable sources, but, yeah. um, you know, we can't really count on that. And yeah. we can't really build responsibly an operating budget every year based on things like, uh, underwriting support because that you could have underwriters this year and not next year. And if you've built um, your expenses for paying for rent, paying for insurance and paying for staff, you know, on a really good year of underwriting support, you're going to have to make cuts the next year. And that is not the way that you offer consistent service to the yeah. community. 
So you really have to protect it. Um, and, you know, I know it's not a favorite topic here. You, you know, many members of the committee on the committee now and in the past have let me know they're not in favor of regionalism um, and taking on other towns. But having Norwell, it's very clear on the ba balance sheet that saved mm -hmm. the space that we have. Norwell pays a rental fee, not only for employees, but also every time they use the studio, they pay a fee for that. That is built into their budget because Hangham Cable money paid for that. I feel that's fair and responsible, and it, it helps bridge these gaps. Um, I can tell you we're not pursuing another town right now, but it makes sense within the next three years that that's how these things get saved. The streaming legislation could really help. Um, when it comes to regionalism, I'm happy to answer any questions. I have regular communication with other executive directors. 1623 Studios is basically most of the North Shore, multiple mm -hmm. towns. PAC TV has four communities. You have the Upper Cape, you have the Lower Cape. These are all towns that have united and pooled their cable funds. They do not separate the programming and they do not separate their expenses. And I know that because our bookkeeper is also the bookkeeper for several of those um, community media centers that combine towns. So we have separate bank accounts, we have separate budgets, we have separate staffing for our shared uh, positions, which Sean is familiar with working with our staff all the time. You know, we split that and, and literally payroll comes from Norwell for Ryan and from Hingham. Um, So I think we're doing a pretty good job, but we're not out of the woods. I have some real financial concerns for forecasting. Well, I, I mean, my point of view about it is, is that I'm not necessarily, I've never been necessarily opposed to the regionalism. It, it was the way that it was conducted with the Norwell deal where we, it was a fait accompli lay, lay on the town of Hingham. So that that was, uh, you know, that was a little bit of the, the, the concern that we had. I think that if, if um, what we want to do, and it's codified in our agreement, is that if you do reach out to another community, and I think that there are some communities that are ripe for this, like Hull and Cohasset in particular, um, because I think that their systems are very fledgling and, and not that dynamic. Um, and I've seen, and I've talked to the people, executive directors there, they, they, they should be interested in doing something. I don't know whether, you know, a lot of this is like, well, I'm running the whole show and this is my job and I don't want to lose it, you know? So yeah. there's, there's always a little bit of that going on, I suppose. But um, it's just a matter of like, you know, okay, if you want to make a deal, be transparent with us about how you're going to make the deal and how we're going to get advan and an advantage of it, seeing as that we bootstrapped and created Arbor Media or HCAM, as you're still formally known. And, you know, how do we how do we make it into the best benefit that we can? And I think you guys would probably, you know, put some, you know, there'd be some negotiations, you know, with some give and take, I'm sure. But um, I personally am not opposed to it. I just think there needs to be more transparency about how it gets done. It, would it yeah, be worth us? new agreement does that because we share the contract and um, yeah. finances and things like that. So I think there's some good processes in place because... The Norwell agreement happened during a, a mid uh, point of the contract, but now with the new contract with the town of Hingham, those things are referenced. So that's probably a good model going forward. I mean, one of the things that impresses me about 1623 that's been able to do that <clears throat> is that they um, they also have a very good um, you know creative services department that does stuff as well, and they they are able to get more revenue in, and that you know maybe also. Harbor Media concentrating on on trying to you know ratchet that up a bit you know beyond just rental of the studio on occasion, but doing creative services. I know that you know I, I mean I've worked for Nantucket on doing creative services for them recently, so I know that other systems are doing that. Um, I know it it you have to get the right people who know how to uh, you know get that work, produce that work, um, get freelancers to do that work um, because you don't want to tax. You're, you're already burdened staff, you're gonna have to have somebody who can executive produce it and manage it with some outside help, you know, as well. But um, that that's another way of, you know, trying to supplement the, the income that's getting lost. Is it, is it worth it? Other systems have, um, you know, gone to a financial model where, you know, basically public programming, non-government, non-education, is a, a fee-for-service model. 
Harbor Media and Norwell Spotlight TV, we don't have that model. We'll support you, we'll collaborate with you however you need, if you need shooters, if you need editors, um, or you have folks that wanna learn camera work to do that part or who are learning editing. The Melissa Mood Food is a great example. Uh, Melissa, the host, uh, produced, scripted, you know, everything and brought in someone to do the camera and the editing and we taught them everything. But um, other systems, I know, I mean, that's that's a major um, source of revenue. All public programming is a fee for service. And we don't do that. No, I mean, I you're uh, talking no. creative service, which is like more commercial I don't uh, think production. I don't think they're mutually exclusive necessarily, though. I think it could be constructed so that it's separated. Um, I think that uh, Newton did that. Um, you know, I mean, you still do your mandate of creating public programming and being open for the local nonprofits, but there are other units and people that want to do things that are more overtly, say, promotional, corporate video, whatever it would be, that might like to work with a local unit that they can feel confident with, that you have a, uh, you know, like 1623 does, or NCTV does, or Newton TV does, they, you know, they all have a separate kind of like moniker and unit that, that can do it. Now, I, I know that's easier said than done because you you need to have the the people who are capable of executive producing that kind of programming and, and being able to support that. Um, but that is a, a potential revenue source that you, you might want to look at, you know, more closely, but it, I'm not saying it's an easy thing to do having run. Yeah. No, we do several creative services projects a year. They're not higher end, high end. Yeah. Uh, yeah they are very reasonably priced because we'd like to do them. And yeah. they're usually folks we're already working with and then they have a commercial project, you know, non-community yeah. television. But I guess what I'm referencing is the trend right now with community media mm -hmm. is that it's a pay for service for public programming. And because Lisa and I, uh, Lisa from Nantucket and I talked exclusively about that. She told me she had a yeah. stack of requests uh, to go ahead and um, present estimates for and it was all public programming. Um, but if they were using, you know, her staff or she was hiring freelancers, there was a cost associated with that. Um, I've talked to several other uh, stations or community media centers who have gone that route. And, and we haven't as a source of revenue. The line of delineation is that our creative services are things that we wouldn't air on television. You know, they're not meant for public programming, I guess yeah. is yeah. the way to describe yeah. it. Michelle, you, you um, mentioned that the streaming legislation would benefit financially. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and when I heard the description of the streaming legislation, I, it, it sounded great to me from a point of view of fairness to the town and the fair use of the public roadways, et cetera. How does it benefit you financially? I don't understand that. Sure. So, you know, currently there's a franchise fee, uh, Comcast and Verizon. If you're a, a subscriber and you live in Hingham and you have Comcast or Verizon, you're paying a fee on your bill. That's restricted uh, funding. It goes to the town. The town holds it in a separate account. And right. our agreement is that the town of Hingham pays us 95% of that quarterly check. So the streaming legislation is proposing to treat streaming companies, Netflix, Hulu, Prime, um, HBO Max, et cetera, the same way. There would be a right. franchise fee for using public rights of way. And the way that the legislation is currently crafted says that um, it, instead of it being 100% restricted funding going to the municipality and going for community media, meaning you can't use it for roads, uh, police, fire, teachers, et cetera, other municipal costs, they've divided it. I believe it is a 40, 30, 30. So 40% yeah. yeah. would go to community media, restricted for community media. 30% would go to the municipality for their own discretion. And 30% would go to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for its discretion. So it's kind of a way of building a bill that would make everybody happy because somebody gets some money, everybody gets money out of it. The state, the, the municipality and community media is still supported. As Joan Moschino said, you're asking community media to do more and more and more. So we need to, to make that point that this provides additional funding. Great, thank you. That makes sense, right? Yep. 
Uh, John, do you think that it's it, since we have a trending, uh, we're we're it sounds like we're discussing well, where's you know revenue is going down? We're going to get more revenue. Uh, is it worth us having a discussion with uh, Harbor Media and yourself and Tom? With well, what does the town want to do for funding its um, you know cable access? Do they want you know a single vendor? Do they want to you know? I mean, do they want to support a regional outfit? I mean, is it worth having that discussion now before it becomes critical? Or because I don't. You know, I'd like to have more of a sense of how the town wants to um, fund, um, you know, uh, their local access. You know, do they want to do it as it what, what originally was just one entity, which was a nonprofit, that we gave them money and they did. It. And now we've moved to, well, it's a nonprofit that has Norwell and maybe it will be regional. You know, we're sort of at a nexus. Do we? Do we want to discuss that further with uh, with the town? I, I think it's probably better to do it sooner than later. But, you know, do you see well, where I'm coming from? I mean, I think in our agreement, you know, it, it, it's sort of understood that if you do pursue that, we, it's nothing to keep you from doing that. No, um, I, that we, the I think the town needs to be appraised of what the what what it's going to be. I mean, right. Suppose we could have a you know a, a discussion with. Tom Mayo to say what what's your opinion of the way that the select board and you would feel about yeah. making feelers um, by expanding that unit um, um, just to get just to get their uh, you know sense of the tea leaves as it were. So I don't think yeah, that that's that's all I'm asking. I mean, you know, strategically, you know, what where who do we want to? I guess strategically, where do we want to go as a town? for local cable access? How do we want to manage it? You know, I, w do we want to do it, you know, on a, just a single entity? Do we want to, I, I think it's important to have that discussions now, right? Because we're we're seeing a decrease in, in revenue and we're kind of looking at this um, this uh, streaming thing, but I'd rather talk about it now before it becomes critical well, I because mean, Michelle's going to run out of money and then now- Well, but the thing is, is that there's, there's, there's a bunch of ways to, to skin a cat, as they say. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, you know, there might be hard decisions if revenue goes down, where the space yep. is going to have to be looked at. Their their increase in in rent is 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 unbelievable. Like if, you know that this local company could could hit them with a forty percent increase willy nilly like that after yep. they did the big build out. I think it's I frankly think it's unconscionable considering they're a low. And I think some you know I I you know I, I don't. I just can't believe that landlord, you know, was able to do that. So, you know, you know, obviously a lot of production, when I had my production company, I had, you know, multiple spaces and I needed it for all my editors. And when all of a sudden my business, I, you know, I looked my series went away, then I just downsized, you know, all of a sudden I had one office and I used a lot more freelancers. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of ways within a production entity to be able to streamline and to look at, look at costs, in a different way on one hand. So that's on the expense point of view, but you know, it also, if you can look at other ways to generate revenue, whether it's, you know, a more aggressive approach to getting underwriting or getting creative services, or, you know, there's just a number of ways you have to look at it. It's not just one way. And I think another way to get revenue is if you went to say two towns and you said, look, if we can service you and it's not gonna cost us anything, and it's going to be a great rev share for us so that we can we can basically take our expense line budget for the Hingham budget down because we're sharing expenses, then yeah. we need to be open to that. Yeah. All of these things are, you know, just something that I think as part of a, a business entity of cable access, they should they should look at. Can yeah, I, I I think that I would be more comfortable if I had had uh, and it's been one of my um, goals is to try to get a better communication with the town and what they want and not just you know, every now and then, you know, they, they say, oh, yeah, we have cable access. I'd like to get them more involved in strategically how we want to go forward, because, you know, I, you know, maybe I, I'm um, uh, oversimplifying is as well. We created this nonprofit called, uh, you know, HCAM and we're done. Well, well, no, we're not kind of done. We got to pay a little attention to it. And, you know, you know and we're in because the industry is changing, we have to kind of have a strategy for you know addressing that and you know how is it is it paid for services you know whatever so yeah but i think the context of it has to be 
you know, how, how well are they doing producing community programming? How, how well are they meeting mm -hmm. the mandate? Which I think they've improved, in, you know, considerably. Sure. So Michelle's been on board. So, I, you know, I think that, you know, and, and if revenue goes down, we've got to look at these these hard questions. And I, as I've just outlined, I think that there are a number of pockets of places where we perhaps have to have a strategy and think about. Okay. Yeah, the other the other trend I would say because I I think Dave, you make a good point. If if you guys can kind of get ahead of this and yeah. the town yeah. administration just say these are some of the trends that are coming. What are your yeah. you know yeah. your thoughts or what are some options? Um, but the other thing that um, I am hearing personally from other executive directors um, is their approach with public programming. Right, <laughs> they fully use their staff for education and government programming. But anything that is is publicly produced, um, a show idea, um, an event request, that kind of thing, non-government, non-education, is please check out our uh, vlog kit, our camera kit. Uh, we'll provide the training and, and, and you send your footage in. So, um, and, and providing some editing support, but not 100%. Yeah. Yeah. We, again, we have not gone to that model. Um, I don't think we need to at this point, but if we ever had a staff reduction, we would absolutely have to do that because yeah. hangout staff yeah. with three full-time videographers, mm -hmm. uh, education access coordinator. Um, and then we have two full-time uh, videographers who do uh, mainly public and government. So they are sharing their time night and during the day mm -hmm. uh, and then working with, with folks, you know, during the day in the studio. So that's how we staff it now. I've actually, it's it's really interesting, John, you probably find these conversations interesting too with staff because other community media centers will say, well, you're the government producer, you're the public producer. Um, you know, sometimes I get the request, can you just hire someone to do the scheduling like a scheduler? Um, and we don't, that's not what we do. Our video, our three videographers do everything. They, they produce, they shoot, they edit, they uh, train um, community members and volunteers, and they schedule the channels. It's like redundancy, I guess you could say. We are not in the position to be vertical. Um, but if the if the cable revenue drops, if we don't get the streaming revenue, mm -hmm. and we would look at a cut, I could see that viable. I know other executive directors have already moved on to that, where public programming is 100% by the public. Um, community media only provides the tools and the training, but our staff would not be out filming with anyone. Yeah, I, um, I think it's worth, and I'll take it on to try to get some kind of um, state of the uh, state of the union for where we're at and what we think is happening in the future. You know, sort of a strategy kind of thing. You know, how does the town want to run it? You know, and I'm, I'm good. I'm good with whatever, but I just don't have a. I don't feel like I have a real grasp that. Um, they're as involved as they should be in the entity. So I would I like to- I think these are, all, these are all worthwhile discussions for us to have as we think about, yeah. you know, where, w w as we discussed, you know, there, there are a number of different options in order to, to be able to continue to produce the programming that we all want to produce and want to yeah. do. Yeah. Um, you know, are we at the stage right now that if the, uh, there's, a, there's a great event, say, or a speaker at the Hingham Historic Society and- Deidre Anderson asks Harvard Media to come and cover it, you know, because it's an, you know, it's it's a good community event. It's good programming. It's a one hour show. It's relatively easy to do, you know, um, you know, but if we get to a point where Michelle has to go to Deidre and say, but you're going to have to pay for this or yeah. or yeah. she'll have to say, look, are we going to we're going to send three shooters or twenty five dollars an hour. They're forty dollars an hour. And that's an inexpensive approach to being able to get to do it so that it still would be subsidized by the town, but that there would be a revenue stream that would come in and it would also create a situation where these nonprofits are being honest about, you know, that there is there is an expense to doing any of these kinds of things and that they should they should consider that. So I think all of these are are, are worthy of further discussion to think about ways in which um, Harvard Media can sustain itself. Yeah. One of the I'll things I'm thinking of is um i'm not really totally connected to this but i know the uh, development committee is looking at um trying to uh find uses for underutilized um real estate in the town of hingham wow. so 
uh, I wonder if it would be worth having a discussion for them where rent is expensive and has the possibility to be volatile. Maybe they could help find some ideas for if you know Harbor Meter needed a a more economical home in the future. If there's something that um, that they could suggest on that score, I think, I think it's a good idea. I think it's a great idea. Also, yeah. um, another trend with community media are not having studios, but having things shot in 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 the community. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that 623 did recently, because um, I, I visited them in their original space, which was in an industrial park in, um, I'm not sure, Gloucester, or one of, one, one, I think it was Gloucester, on the outskirts of Gloucester. And uh, Eric moved his um, whole operation in. They, they, there was some, at that time, four or five years ago, there was a, there was a like many towns that are a little, and I, I wouldn't qualify Hingham as this, but towns like Foster had a little trouble. You know, they were losing storefronts and they were lo losing businesses. And, um, you know, so they were empty spaces. And um, so he moved it into a very visible um, space that's on the main thoroughfare there uh, in Gloucester so that the unit gets a lot of visibility from that. You know, they have a big screen in the picture window. They're kind of promoting, you know, it's it's a great way to promote the, you know, the fact that it exists and it's there. When you're in an industrial park, who knows, you know? Yeah, I actually, I don't know if you know this, uh, we used to live in Manchester by the sea and we were in uh, Gloucester, you know, quite a bit, but hang on, you know, the South Shore really doesn't have that issue. Yeah. With vacant storefronts. Except That's true. Bad <laughs> now, not now, now a pickleball court. And a pickleball court, yeah. <clears throat> Hey, John, is that it's just like town stuff that they own that they that's that's not being used? Is that what you're saying? Town? Uh, no, it's just the overall. Um, how do I put this? The, um, for instance, the post office in yeah. Hingham Square. Yeah, that's a distribution center. Right. Which causes a lot of traffic and oh. byproducts from traffic pollution, blah, blah, blah. That post office could be um, in in an industrial center somewhere. It doesn't matter really where it is. Right. It doesn't need to be in the center of town. A, a kiosk the size of, you know, an ice cream stand could serve the needs of consumers for their postal stamps and packages and so forth the way the one on 53 does. Um mm -hmm. And that building could be better used for something that's got more vitality. So oh, okay. this okay. committee, that's an example of what this committee is doing, is seeing if there could be some other interest in redeveloping the post office building in Hingham Square okay. to do something more exciting. But well, has there been any discussion about the town hall that's getting downsized because the police and the Everybody else is moving elsewhere when they build this yeah, new. The senior citizens are taking it over. Yeah, the senior well, uh, senior center is jockeying for that, so that might be a tough bet. And then I hear that the senior citizen says, "We don't want to be in this place. We want to be, have our own seniors." Because you can, you uh, can imagine that there's going to be a, another, you know, let's go to the taxpayers for more money for another building someplace. Yeah, right. my understanding is that the the town had been running out of space. That's why the uh, I think it was last summer the school committee room that we used for recording those meetings uh, was dismantled and they used that for office space that they were in a real need um, for office space. Yeah. Well, let's get, if they're doing this uh, deep think, let's get the, you know, the cable uh, stuff. In, I in think the, there's in all the kinds of things you could think of. I mean, they're, yeah. I don't know how possible it is, you know, Heather, no one's asking for a decision, but if all, if no ideas are bad ideas, you know, community media centers that utilize uh, high school space, uh, yeah. we do that here in Marshfield, it, it's, it's a real benefit to the school, to the students and to the community. And it is a way to really get the most out of the, you know, cable budget. So um and, and programming you know from the students because then it is folded in and integrated into the curriculum and you you have a studio where you you have a space 
So it's, I guess, I guess I would use the word combining efforts. Yeah. That ideally that would be great having it in a high school setting. Um, but there, there, I've been told many times that all of the school buildings are just full jam packed. And there's one in the high school, there's one sort of multi-use uh, room, but it's not very big and it's, it's constantly being uh, rented out by community organizations, town hall and stuff like that. So the the only place I could think of is, you know, the new foster school. Maybe there'll be room there uh, yeah. when it's built in 2024. But the current buildings that are there, every classroom is is being used and they, you know, they still don't have room for for things. But you know, one that, the, I like that idea. One of the things this town is incredibly good at is saying no. <laughs> I, unbelievably good at saying no to every no. new idea that no. comes down the pike or any change or any so you know i think sometimes our work is connected to just poking people and saying you know can we do this really think about it let's think outside the box yeah no i agree I think my opinion in general is co-oping with another town just makes sense to me um just that's immediate revenue that you know their cable uh their subscribers are are giving and you know maybe it'll be a a savior for these towns maybe they don't want to be doing it on their own you know what i mean i just that that makes sense if the trend is that um folks are cutting cords and you're getting less revenue it's just it's writings on the wall i feel like co-oping with you know hall cohasset or whatever i think that just makes sense to yeah. me i mean you could expand into this creative right uh what did you say creative Services. services creative services you, you know create this whole new business model and stuff like that or you just knock on hall's door and say hey do you want to mm -hmm. do you want buddy up and you know give us your money i feel like that's just more simple and it just makes more sense and you're saying oh there's upper cape lower cape like it, it's usually not just two towns right oh yeah it's been it's been done for it's been done for decades actually yeah it makes sense to me well i i think i gotta get more tied in with the town, you know, hey, hey, this is the trend, you know, how do we want to address it? You know, John so brings it up. I, I completely agree, you know, having been uh, working with the uh, Hingham uh, Cable TV Committee for three and a half years, I agree with you. The programming should be Hingham. The finances should be Hingham. You know, it, it still should be that hyper-local approach these other stations, they don't do it. 1623, you get a mix. Pack TV, you get a mix. You may be watching Kingston, Plymouth. And, you know, that's up to them. And, and they're getting their contracts renewed. Um, but I think there is success and a way to do it. Uh, we've worked really hard to do that. Um, mm -hmm. John has had a lot of feedback for us that's been incorporated. And then with the new contract, we do keep our programming separate and we keep our finances separate. There's very little crossover on that sometimes it just makes sense um yeah. but for the most part it's all very separate it is not combined programming is is my point and it's definitely not combined finances which i know the other systems are doing so i think we can honor all requests and still be fiscally responsible about it all right, all right. well I, I will uh, i'll take on the trying to get some kind of uh, strategy meeting together i think that would be helpful at least to me anyway um so that's uh, finances. Uh, schools update. Heather, what's happening? Hi. Yes, Hi. Um, <laughs> great news, I'm sure. Um, so Dr. Adams and uh, the high school principal, Rick Swanson, they actually sat down with the media teacher. Yep. Uh, they came up with a plan. And Michelle, you can speak to this that um, or confirm this, that it, the class already started producing content after that meeting. Um, so they actually... Uh, what they sat down and discussed was that there needs to be more student productions. Um, and of course, there was this typical back and forth saying, well, it's not in the curriculum, that kind of thing. We really focus on the Friday show. And the history of the Friday show is it's supposed to be um, a show that the students produce and the only students are going to see. They don't they won't don't they want to have the freedom to not have to share that with the community. So that's okay. sort of the agreement with this Friday show. Um, but even by the end of last year, they submitted three shows um, that were um, created by students. So there's a catching kindness feature, a couple minutes, booktastic beach day feature, and Ospreys on the field. 
So they're already creating content that I, you know, when I reviewed it and I think it's exactly what this committee was looking for, exactly what Harbor Media was looking for. Um, I'm not sure if they're up on Harbor Media just yet. They might be um, still being edited or, or what have you, but uh, the message was received and there's already been results. And the plans for next year is to continue that student productions, couple minutes here, you know, student led. Um, and then the other uh, idea was that students would um, basically uh, different folks from administration would be the, the the interviewers for interviewing like, you know, the um, interviewing the industrial tech teacher or something. So it would be like Rick Swanson in an interview, but the students would be shooting it, they'd be filming it, they'd be editing it and stuff like that. So um, there's buy-in from administration to to honor the deal, the contract, I should say, and they've already been producing um, what you're looking for. So we'll, you know, monitor it closely next year and make sure that's still happening. Um, but I think the message was received. Well, great. We ought to do a little um sort of a compendium at the end of the year look at this stuff that came from the schools you know kind of like a short psa for the school kind and of. I, and dr adams i imagine talk talk to them about the importance of the right situation right yes um yeah. i yeah. think it, so that'll that is addressed for anything that they'll be submitting to harbor media i think it was more the friday show was uh students opportunity to just be as creative as they can so if they taylor swift lyrics make sense to them they're going to put that in there but it <laughs> the friday show was never intended to be shared with the public it, uh, it was like this is the agreement you create, you be as creative as you can. And I promise, you know, only the students are going to see it. So I think that's why the, there was always leniency there, but anything submitted to Harbor Media, they understand can't have copyrighted material. Jeez. I want to see this Friday show. It sounds like it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting, but uh, yeah. I, I read it. I don't know. <laughs> No, the students Excellent. are seeing it. it. It's just it, it it wouldn't it wouldn't make sense for Harbor Media. It just people yeah. wouldn't really understand the references or really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I yeah, sort of inside baseball stuff. Yeah, yep. yeah. All right, cool. Well, but great. Is the Friday show. The only thing that that class sort of helps tells these kids to generate that that's like basically the class. It's like create this this goofball show. Right. So that that's sort of their weekly project that that they focus on, but they do do separate features um, that is are that the kind of stuff that, Is that the kind of stuff we would get? Yes. I think there just wasn't really a mechanism to edit and share it. Like there wasn't, you know, these shows were being produced and, and what Glenda shared it, you could tell she did some light editing, but now that there's this recognition that, you know, what students produce, we, we want to put on Harbor media. They're, they're, going to get into that habit because okay. it, it was happening you know this this kid uh noticed that ospreys were making a, a home on top of the one of the light posts or the yeah. yeah and you know they took a camera out there they were taking some b-roll and stuff like that and i don't know tip i don't know in the past why they didn't share something like that um but you know they will now and, and glenn is definitely on board after meeting with the superintendent of schools and the principal. <laughs> she's she's on board. Wow, that's great. Good news. Good yes. News. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, thank you. All right. Um, I had down here public comments. Someone wanted to, uh, from the public wanted to join. Who, what was that, Michelle? Someone from the public wanted to... Uh, I'm shoot. not sure what that was. They asked to join the meeting and... I saw yeah. in an email thread that we shared. You're right. Oh, we right. Shared yeah. how to join the meeting, but it looks like they didn't come. Oh, oh you know. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So uh, that was a member of the community who has video production. Yeah, that's the one. Right. She wasn't sure when the next meeting was. She couldn't tell from the committee's website. Right. Uh, the next meeting was because I believe the agenda wasn't posted, and I don't think the agenda gets posted. I know what you do, Dave, but. I don't think the agenda gets posted in advance more than the 48 hours. And yeah. so she was reaching out to ask when the next meeting was. So I replied to her and let her know, sent her the town website, which I think she already had. She couldn't make tonight's date. Okay. And okay. then I told her, I wasn't sure if there would be one in August or September. She said she'd watch the page, but it brought up a good point. I don't, I don't 
unless you add it or ask for it to be added, I don't think it says, oh, the next meeting is September, blah, blah, blah. So she didn't well, you know can, the meeting July 18th. Because I, I set it up for selected committees. If you go to the town website, you can be notified when something's posted. Oh, you should sign up for that. Okay. Yeah, I'm on yeah. that. If she does that, then the, the thing is, I can't post the agenda until I get the, the Zoom stuff. From but if you guys decide tonight at the end of the meeting to have your next meeting, you know, the second Tuesday of September or something, is there a way to just post that at the top? Just, you know, tune in or stay tuned for the agenda that save the date. That's a good point. Um, I'll ask. Uh, that's a good point. Can I can I post an agenda without the Zoom stuff? You know, yeah, I, I'll, I'll try that. I know what you're saying, you know, because I. Save the date. You know, yeah. What's save that? The date, maybe. Save the date, right? So yeah, we could do that because um, I would definitely uh, want to get more uh, members of the public involved um, and sort of grow the uh, grow the infrastructure as it were. Yeah, I so. mean, it used to be oh, as long as it was posted in the Hingham Journal, but now there's no Hingham Journal, right? No, <laughs> that, no that's, that's right. So all right, um, well, grant update. You forgot there there are no public comments because we don't have the public on it. So we Dave, will. Um, Dave, we you will skipped up. You skipped over grant updates. Oh, grant updates. You're right. Grant updates. That would be Michelle. Grant uh, updates. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so uh, we received seven completed applications yep. for this grant cycle. Yep. Uh, I can uh, categorize the applicants as uh, all people we work with, except for one applicant uh, who we've not worked with before who submitted three applications. And she found out through um, a former member of our staff <laughs> who's in Rotary and was telling everyone in Rotary. Okay. So, um, so the committee is meeting soon to make final decisions on that. We expect to be able to announce that by the end of July, who the, you know, who will be funded, which application yeah. will be funded. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So I mean, the, the, yeah. the one thing that uh, Michelle and I discussed, um, uh, I mentioned to you briefly, Dave, is yep. that Kristen, who um, I was hoping, you know, was going to join our, I'm not sure why she's not here tonight, because it'd be great if she was here. Um, in our uh, agreement with Harbor Media, we have sort of a, a carve out that um, there's specific people at that Harbor Media can't be involved in producing the um, you know, staff and uh, members of their board can't be involved with um, uh, benefiting from the production grants, as well as um, cable advisory committee members. Um, and so uh, with Kristen has got an application that she has submitted for Hingham Cares. She's the executive director of Hingham Cares. I don't know if she's compensated in her executive director role or not. But um, I was curious whether we felt that that was going to be a conflict or not, a conflict, conflict of interest, and that we needed to sort of have somebody weigh in on, on how close that can be. Now, she's not on the committee yet, so there's no conflict just yet because she hasn't been interviewed and, and you know, hasn't been, been, been endorsed. But, I mean, because she, her intent is to be on the committee, would, would it, would it prov if all of a sudden the production grant started happening, would she have to take a step back? I think Michelle was telling me today that she felt like, well, as long as she's not being compensated, but I don't know whether she gets compensated by Hingham Cares as an executive director. So it's 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 to me it's a little it's a little on the fuzzy side in terms of um, what the opinion would be from the the legal point of view and whether we want to get John and the town to to weigh in on it as well as the council that has weighed in on it who helped create the production grant um, at Harbor Media so that we make sure that we're not in, um, in, a, you know, in arrears and we can let Kristen know one way or the other in case she wants to make a choice, you know? Yeah, so I looked at some of the documentation since we talked, John, and okay. just want to kind of segment it out because um, in our discussion today, we referenced both the um, Harbor Media Hingham agreement that deals with the grant program that mandates the grant program and that was amended actually just a few months ago so i looked at the amendment and the language so the town of hingham amendment in our contract really says hey harbor media we'd like you to use excess reserves for a grant program 
um, and uh, you know, kind of the stipulations don't produce, you know, your equipment or your staff can be used to help cut down the expense. But there's nothing in there that talks about um, conflict of interest, but that's okay. Because in our agreement of what Harbor Media created to run this grant program, we had a legal review and an auditing accounting review and language was added. All of this is in our toolkit on our website with all the tool, all the all of the documents for the grant program. And it says very specifically, we didn't create our own terms. We are defaulting to Massachusetts conflict of interest. So that's what we use. That's what we link in the document. Um, my understanding is that anyone overseeing this program may not financially benefit from the grant nor their family members. However, and I'll give you an example. Um, if Dave Jones were to submit a grant application for the Alzheimer's Association and say, we would like to produce a program, a documentary of Hingham residents who have the diagnosis, are coping with the diagnosis, who are caretakers or are um, medical professionals mm -hmm. caring for folks with Alzheimer's. If Dave were to produce that, but not appear on the budget as being financially compensated, that would be considered for the grant program mm -hmm. um, because he's not receiving money. In the same way, on the grant program, we give a list of resources of professional videographers, editors, producers, directors who could, you know, that an applicant can go to and say, I have this great idea. Will you help me with this? We're going to create an application. Some of those are listed as unpaid. Margie, for example, is a professional producer. She's listed as an unpaid resource, as is John, because they can get involved in productions, but they can't receive any money for them. Neither can their children or their husband, you know, spouses, partners, et cetera. So that's our interpretation with our legal counsel that people can apply. They can be part of these productions. And if you think about it, the people who on the cable committee, on our board, even although no one on our board submitted any, any applications or are being used as a resource. So those are the people already engaged in video production and community media. They might be what we consider low hanging fruit. They just can't get paid. They can't receive the dollars. Um, so that's our that's our understanding. It doesn't mean you're going that your project's going to get funded, but I think the conflict is of interest is more around you can't receive financial compensation that goes against the Massachusetts conflict of interest laws. You can't tee up money and you can't oversee money and then receive money. Yeah, but if you're paid by an organization and the organization gets the money, is there really, is there really, you are kind of benefiting from that because they're, they're using it for fundraising. They're using it for, in other words, I, I just wonder how much it's like you, it gets connective tissue, you know? Yeah. That's why we asked for a production budget in the grant application. So uh, they have to, they have to produce a, a budget that said how much and who's getting paid. So I agree with you. If it said, uh, Kristen Arute, five out, like Deirdre's application, uh, the Historical Society mapped out everyone, their hours and their rate of how much they were asking for and who was receiving what. So yeah, that would be a conflict of interest. Well, yeah, I, I, if someone on the cable committee yeah. was, they were spending 10 hours producing something at a $50 an hour rate. They can't be paid for that. Right. But I mean, I, like I say, it's a it can be interpreted in different ways. Say, and I, don't, I have no idea what their proposal is. I'm just using this as an analogy. Hingham Cares gets awarded a production contract to create a video that's going to promote Hingham Cares. And it's going to be a touchy-feely piece, whatever it's going to be. Mm -hmm. um, and they use it at a big fundraising gala because they want to be able to premiere it once they own it. They could use it however they want. They raise money off of it and the executive director gets their salary from the money that they raise indirectly it's it's then it's 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 not that different and they, just because they're not in the line item doesn't necessarily mean they're not eventually financially benefiting from it so it's like i say it's a i'd like to get an opinion from somebody about like how close it can get to that point you know 
Yeah. So what I would say is the grant is is very plainly written as a reimbursement for production expenses. That's why we request a budget. Yeah. I think that, you know, the uh, cable committee raises a valid point. If you'd like to take it to town council on our end, we have no problem with it. And our contract with the town of Hingham says nothing about this. We're the ones that put in our own language the conflict of interest. And we're happy with that. We got a legal opinion for that. The town didn't put that in our agreement or the- Did, did they take it out? Because I remember it distinctly being in there at one point. When we did the an, an amendment, you had that taken out? No, it was never in the town contract. The only- I don't think it was, it, it was ever in there. It was never in the town contract. That was our doc, that was our program that we created. Right. to provide a framework for the grant program. <clears throat> and we had our accountant and our our uh, lawyer heavily involved in the creation of that. Yeah. Do we want to have John look at it, John? <laughs> it's got enough Johns here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would like, just like to review it. I mean, I, I just think we have to be careful with it. I'm, I'm just raising a, a thing where, um, you know, I just don't want it to proceed. You know, somebody's on the cable committee and they're you know, if I, I wouldn't want any favoritism given to me, for, for instance, if I was consulting with the Historic Society on a project, I wouldn't, I, I don't think I could really be involved with that project because I think it would really, you know, mainly, I mean, a little bit because I've been obviously integrally involved in helping, helping, you know, you know, put, create the production grant program in that sense, you know, from a, from my position here, but you know, you know what I mean? So I just think that we just have to be careful. And, and then Kristen wants to be on the committee. So that, that's the, otherwise I would not care, you know, but. Uh, well, when, uh, so for example, you, John are listed because you have, uh, you know, a lot of producing, directing and uh, shooting experience, you're listed as an unpaid resource on the grant resource page. Um, you know, when I reached out and asked you to be on that, um, so you don't see that as a conflict. I think the issue, if I'm understanding it, would be because Kristen Arut may be on this committee and she's the executive director. And even if she's not listed on the budget as receiving funds, mm -hmm. you're saying that that organization would benefit from the program that was produced. Their, their budget, and again, I don't have in front of me and I'm, you know, it's for the, the committee, but um, it's it's production costs from an outside production company. That that's yeah. what she, they put together a budget for. Right, but uh, like I say, that it, it's all about the content too. That they're using it for fundraising and stuff, and that. Directly... Well, that would be community media. That wouldn't fit the definition of yeah. community media. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, uh, emotional, I would say, would definitely not yeah. fit the definition of what belongs on TV. Well, yeah, but you know what I mean? It's like you go to a gala and they do a piece that could be editorial in nature and it's used as part of that that thing. It's not, it's, it's like branded entertainment. You know what I mean? It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's really not, it's really the same thing. I mean, I just produced something for Nantucket that they paid me to do for feet for, you know, as a freelancer. And it was for one of their local community groups, a foundation out there. They used it for they're using it for fundraising. They're also using it for a gala that they're doing. You know, I don't know if that would be that that that's an example of like, okay, people are benefiting from that. So I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. So I would say I would say where we are. So when I presented the materials last August, and then the cable committee reviewed that, discussed it, met with town council. I want to say that was October, November. And yeah. then provided feedback. Feedback. The main feedback was take out the 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 clawback. Meaning, if an organization yeah. owns this and then makes money on it, we would love the the grant funds replenished to fund something else. We took that out because the cable committee reviewed all of our materials, had suggestions, spoke with the town, expressed their uh, feedback, presented that to us, and we changed the documents accordingly. Yep. Uh, so that was done i would say we should probably follow that same process um that if you you know have additional concerns and and you know kind of like what we did with the amendment like things come up and there's in theory and reality right when you start to roll things out other questions come up and so that's why we have the amendment um so i would i would say definitely take that to the town and and um 
and uh, you know, discuss it. And then if there's an action item for me, please let me know. Yeah, I'll I'll take care yeah, of you know, if John wants to. Yeah, I'll take yeah. care. Don't worry about it. Okay. All right. Uh, next up, uh, we usually take August off, so I've got on the uh, the generic. Uh, I have September twelfth, seven o'clock. Don't I will not be around September twelfth. Okay. Um, and I won't be back in the country until it's my 50th anniversary, you know, guys. Um, wow. Yeah. Wow. Heading to Greece. Uh, let's see. Congratulations. John can give you pointers. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I was. <laughs> I, yeah, don't go when it's hot. <laughs> don't go when it's hot. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Jeez, when am I coming back on that thing? Uh, uh, Bring a fan. Huh? Bring a fan. Bring a fan. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, the end of September, I'm running around. I end up in Venice, which I'm really looking forward to. Oh, nice. Uh, uh, <clears throat> well, we could, we could do... Um, uh, Friday the 29th of September. Yeah. I won't be here that day, but. Oh, all right. Why Friday? Why, why are we? Well, why the 28th, that? I'll probably be in no shape to do anything because I'm flying back late. And when do you leave? You leave for the whole month? I leave on the 14th, which actually is the date of my anniversary. Well, why don't we do the 12th of September? Well, that. That, well, I, I said the 12th, but then I think John said he can't oh, make it. September 5th. Or, 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 the thir or the 11th or 13th or whatever, 11th would be fun. Um, we could do the 11th, yeah. I'm going to be away from the 5th to the 19th. Oh, oh. he's the guy that's screwing us up here. All right. Okay. Right. All right. Um, mm. Well, uh, Monday yeah, the 4th. I, I, I think now we're talking October. We should just probably do it the Tuesday the 3rd. And... Yeah, because uh, Monday's a holiday. Wait, nobody's around. Yeah. Oh. All right. So it's going to be uh, October 3rd. Going once. My wife will be happy. No CAC meetings for a while. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, October 3rd. October that works 3rd. for me. All okay. Right. Excellent. And hopefully I'll be able to get back <laughs> with no problems. Uh, let's see. All right. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Kristen says aye. All right. Hey, good discussion, guys. Um, All right. Good. Um, have a good summer. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. You too. Bye now. Bye. <laughs> To contact the Hingham Cable TV Advisory Committee, uh, you can reach us at cac at hingham-ma.gov, or you can visit our webpage at the link shown here, or just scan the UQR code. Thanks for watching.